Hello everyone and welcome to this video. It is the last video uh, of uh, the second section of the BID workshop on biodiversity data mobilization. During this video I'm going to summarize what we have seen in the previous weeks uh, in different modules and uh, also to talk a little bit of what is coming in the, in the, final, in the final section of the workshop. So I will, I will use the presentation that I'm going to activate right now. Just a second. Yes, so as I was saying, the idea is, uh, is to talk about the four main modules that we have studied during the main section of the workshop, and they are listed here in the, in the screen. Uh, the first one was biodiversity data mobilization planning. The second one was data uh, digitization. The third one was data creation, formatting, and transfor transformation. And the fourth one was uh, biodiversity data publishing. So we are going to go in detail and summarizing some of the key, act, key aspects that we have seen in, this, in these modules. About biodiversity mobilization planning, we saw that uh, we need to know our projects, of course. If you have not been part of the design of that project, you have to, to study the, the project design in detail. And you have to, to know well what is going to be your data source, where is the biodiversity data uh, is going to come from and based on that you have to do your own research on finding uh, digitization workflows that work for that particular setup there is a lot of examples we have uh, seen some of the sources where you can you can find those workflows and in, as a general as a general rule also try to find one that works for you and if you have colleagues or you have you know of any project that are similar to yours and that you have uh, seen and you like the results, then, then try to communicate with those teams that have uh, completed that work, look for any documentation that they have produced, and try to imitate the work if, if that is, is something that you believe that will, will work well for your context. Obviously, you need to develop uh, realistic plans that align with the resources that you have at your disposal. We have talked uh, quite a lot in our, in our workshop about human resources and how to make the best use of the expertise and, uh, and the capacity that you have in your teams. And once you have uh, made a plan to make the best use of those resources, how to, to, to contract external help during the, the time that the, that the project is running. One, of, one idea to keep always in mind is that, well, plans uh, are, are needed and are very good, but they should not be casting a stone. So you, you will need to refine your plan once in, in operation. So it's good that you also have in mind when and how you are going to refine those, those plans once you have uh, you started the real implementation and you face the reality, the limitations, and maybe readjust calendars and resources accordingly. Finally, one, one important aspect to take into account that is usually forgotten at the time of planning is what will happen after the project funding is over. So how are you going to maintain the products, the data products that you will have produced after the workshop and how it's going to work in terms of uh, once the, the information is published on, online, who is going to be receiving feedback from users, who is going to act upon that feedback. So there's, there's uh, several, several things to take into account after the project funding is over and it's good that at the planning time you also tackle them. So continuing with the second module, we talked about data digitization. And our general recommendation and the approach that we have taken during this workshop is to try to learn the basics using a simple data structure. So most of the time we have worked with the spreadsheets, very simple spreadsheets that have helped us to understand uh, several basic concepts on, on turning uh, information from the real world into, into digital data. So again, it's very important that you have your requirements very clear, which are the objectives, the final objectives of your project, but also what do you want to do with that digital data? And then obviously define the digitization process and the structures, the data structures you want to use according to those, to those uh, objectives. Uh, we talked about software and the difference between using generic simple software like spreadsheets to specific digitization software and the challenges that this dedicated software brings together with the benefits that they also offer. So it is very important to have clarity on your requirements in terms of software. 
and uh, at the time of selection and analyzing different software opinions, software options, uh, then being able to compromise on what exactly is essential for you and your team and which are the parts where you will have to well adapt to what it is available in the market. Uh, we have insisted like uh, very, very frequently on the that early alignment with uh, international standards that we use at the time of publishing really helps at the time of publishing the information online. So things as simple as using the same names for fields, uh, uh, separating or putting together information when we do the utilization saves a lot of time at the time of publishing and it helps for any data exchange um, so use tools that really really can can save a lot of time and effort later in the process talking about data transformation which is uh, is something that you will do very frequently just when using your own data internally but also at the time of publishing and it also very is linked with uh, the process well, what we call the data quality and data fitness for use how the data is going to be used and uh, by whom so the highest the quality of the data, the more uses that we enable, right? We have talked quite a lot about that. And, uh, and we have talked about how it's important to try to address data quality as early as possible, because prevention always beats correction. So make sure that uh, as soon as you can, try to identify potential data quality issues and try to address them as early as the digitization and hopefully also during the planning the planning part of the project. Uh, at the time of transforming and um, modifying data, it's important that you select a set of tools that will help you during the process, in the same way that we talked about uh, the utilization tools. There are also data quality tools to select. And uh, you will have to find and have always at hand other resources that are helpful by the time of doing data transformation and data quality related processes. For example, taxonomic checklists of the of the taxa groups that you are working with, or geographical gazetteers for the areas where, where you also have that relate to the to the data you're working with. Sometimes it takes some time to get hold of those materials, so it's good that you start as soon as possible, like getting again contacting whoever may have that information. Some information is available online, but some other will have to you have to do further research. Also, at the, at the level of data transformation, it is essential to talk about documentation. Every time you modify something in your data, that you, that you do any process, to even if it's to improve the data, to homogenize, it, uh, it is important to document it. And we can do those, you can do the documentation both at the record and at the data set level. So every record that has been changed should have a description of what changes has gone through. But also, when all the changes have been across the whole data set, we should document that through the data set metadata. And we have talked about metadata both uh, to keep with the data and at the time of publishing. So precisely, data publishing is one process that brings specific data transformation challenges because precisely aligning with the standards require uh, transforming data sometimes. Uh, formats may be different than the one that you were using. Uh, some data will have to be merged, some of the other fields may have to be separated. So, in general, be, be ready for doing uh, some data transformation and, and reserve some time before data publishing to make sure that the data is in the best, in the best uh, shape to be published. Um, to finish the fourth module, we we're talking about data publishing and, in particular, publishing by diversity data through GBIF. We have uh, focused on the use of the IPT, the Integrated Publishing Toolkit, which is a service, the server software that GIF recommends for publishing because it facilitates the publishing process a lot. We also talk that the same data can be published in different ways. So we have talked in, along the workshop about the Darwin Core standard and the different combinations, that uh, different ways of using the standard that we have, including selecting, selecting a core and different extensions. So as I was saying, the same data can sometimes be published using different cores and different extensions. And uh, that selection will, will limit or will define 
which data is available online from from what you have originally captured, which normally will be usually richer because at the time of publishing, we have to align with the standards that are designed to cover the, the biggest variety of data possible. So at the time of publishing, it's important to make that selection and that study on how, how it can be published. Uh, also, at the time of publishing, it's also very important to focus at the time of producing the metadata, the description of our data set, because the, the, the metadata is the business card of our data, is how other people will know what is the, the data that you have produced. And sometimes it's also useful for us, because you may not remember exactly a specific process that happened maybe months or years back. So metadata is also useful for oneself, and, and uh, it's, it's, it's helpful to have very good descriptions of, of the data sets. And yes, as a general recommendation uh, at the time of data publishing is to start with a small data set that you know well, that probably you have put a special effort on curating, go through the whole process. And once the data is available online, you can republish uh, as necessary. Publish should not, not be a one-time uh, event, but something more like included in your process of, of of using your own data. So as you curate it, as you transform it, you should republish as necessary. <coughs> Sorry. So, and then what's what's going on, what's what's coming now once we finish this second second section of the of the workshop. So the third workshop section starts today and it has two components. There's one component which still is uh, a learning a learning experience and it's about the use of gif.org. And in particular, we have given uh, this, this, uh, this module, uh, we have designed it from the point of view of the data publisher. So we highlight elements that are important in terms of citation, on how the data sets will be available, what, how, can you, how can they be found, and how can they be downloaded and accessed. And uh, the second part of this third section is the assessment. So for the assessment of your capacity after the workshop, we will use a use case, just like the ones that we have been using before. So this is use case number three. And there will be exercises exactly as, as the ones you have done during the workshop. Please remember that for the assessment, we will use the public rubrics that have been uh, made available at the beginning of the workshop. So it's good to have them at hand and read them again to be familiar with what the trainers will, will use to evaluate your work and make sure that by the time that you complete the exercises, you make sure that you are demonstrated those skills that are, are described uh, in, the, in the rubrics. So, and this, this third module for online participants will be up until the 4th of December. So the 4th of December is when you will have to submit your, your final assignments. And to finish, uh, there is also today we will release the evaluation system for the workshop. There will be two, two forms, one in English and one in French. And it's a, it's, a, it's a way for us to capture your feedback, your satisfaction levels for, uh, in general, for the workshop from the uh, preparatory activities till the end to the evaluation and this, this final module I've just talked about. So these uh, forms are going to be available till the 9th of December. And after that, we'll compile all your feedback um, and prepare a report. <clears throat> we use this, uh, this feedback to improve future, future materials and editions of the event. So it's, it's very important that you provide and we hope that we'll use as much as we can to improve uh, future materials. And uh, well, that was, that was it. So I would just like to, well, to thank all of you for not only following the workshop, but for all the interactions, all, your, uh, uh, all the messages that you have sent in the forum and directly to us and the good positive feedback that we have received so far. Uh, well, best of luck finishing the activities. Um, we will see you very soon. Thank you very much.